Well, welcome everybody. It's great to be here. I apologize for my voice up ahead, but hey man, I've just finished a theatrical run of Christmas Carol, and you'll be glad to know that Scrooge can barely speak. Having said that, we can move on. It's December, and on behalf of the American Schooner Association and the Great Chesapeake Bay Schooner Race, I'd like to welcome you all to our December session with a woman that I have come to know and respect very much our great friend, Nancy Richardson. And Nancy's got quite a story to tell, and I'm so glad that she could be here with me today. Hey, Nancy, how are you? I'm fine. I'm eager to, to go through this. Oh, me too. I have to say, I love the view off of your balcony. The little white spot off to your right is a 110-foot brigantine. Oh, my gosh. What's the name? Uh, I can't really see the rub rail. Um, yeah, I can't either. The XC Johnson has a red rail. And the Irving Johnson has a blue rail because Irving's birthday was the 4th of July. Oh, excellent. I and know. those are the ships of L.A. Maritime Institute. I totally love that. Well, Nancy, I wanted to hook up with you because you and I had a very nice time along with Dan Moreland as we watched Irving Johnson's Around Cape Horn last March, I believe it was. And you were one of our co-hosts and uh, you actually knew Irving Johnson. And so we've asked you to put together a little bit about your life and the boats you've sailed, the ships you've been on. And uh, <laughs> I've just gotten a, uh, a little note here. And before we get into that, a little bit about uh, the rules for this and rules of engagement for our webinar tonight. For those of you who are joining us, um, we have a chat window running, which you can type into and we'll be more than happy to chat back. We also have a question and answer window up. So, Click over there and ask any questions you got. What we normally do is go through our presentation and then address any questions you might have along the way. So that's what's going on here. And uh, Jeffrey, thank you for your condolences about my voice. <laughs> hey, Nancy, let's get this show started. Tell us a little bit about you and let's get into your slides, okay? Okay, you'll learn about me through my slides for the most part, but sailing from a wide world of ships to a small world of shipmates is that first um, slide. Yeah. And I added, I added the parade of all kinds of ships so that you would realize that... Um, you don't have to be tall to be a tall ship. I like that. All kinds of rigs and stuff. And mm -hmm. and uh, so not all the ships that I'm talking about are physically tall, but mm -hmm. certainly their spirit and reputation are. Nice. Very nice. Okay. There's that picture that was of me on... Uh, I guess Irving Johnson with the wide world in my right hand and the small world in my left mm -hmm. at the helm. On the side is a, a Zen diagram, I think it's called. Yeah, Ben, right. That shows that the three elements of what I'm talking about are students, ships, and the sea. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to have um, a good mm -hmm. sail because we are all students learning as we go and as we sail and have sea experience and shipboard living we develop into better sailors, shipmates and stewards in the center mm -hmm. but what it takes is well as you may know I've sailed over 100 tall ships but mm -hmm. my line is you can count ships, but the ships that count are leadership, 
teamship and stewardship. And we'll see how that works out in the next slides. Wonderful quote. The Girl Scout theme starts early. Um, in 1939, my troop on the upper left <laughs> sailed with Irving and Exie Johnson on their topsail schooner, Yankee. And the baby, I think, is, is Robert Johnson. Oh, wow. How about that? Um, and my leader is up, that's my leader, my Girl Scout leader. But the story is, um, I, I first heard Irving talk about uh, Yankee's fourth voyage um, when the mariners from my town sold tickets to his lecture. And I was totally entranced by the Girl Scouts in uniform, blue uniforms, and I wanted to be a Mariner Girl Scout right away. But I had to wait until I was a, a sophomore in high school. Oh, great. And then I started my sailing career. The other things here that um, reflect uh, my history with Girl Scouts and tall ships are in the center. You can see an astronaut and a tall ship. And if you can't recognize it, it was a float in the Rose Parade in 2012. Oh, Much to my God. surprise, they they uh, compared these two kinds of of travel in the his in the hundredth anniversary of Girl Scouting. There mm -hmm. were other things on the float too, but this really really was neat. Oh, I did go great. on in Girl Scouting to become. Um, a Girl Scout staff person. And as staff, I was the Marine Education Program Specialist. And one of the projects that we did was the Gift of Water Project. Uh, I think it was for the 70, 1982, 60th World um, Anniversary of Girl wow. Scouts in the USA. And we pulled together a, a 10 new patches that have to do with water and water safety. Oh, that's what we're seeing here, right? Yeah, that's the cover and the badges. And the patch is from Wildlife and Wind Jammers, which was a an event that we put on on board Young America and Girl Scouts sailed from, some sailed from Norfolk, and some sailed, um, well, they sailed from Norfolk to Boston for Opsail Boston. And then another group came on and um, sailed to, to um, I guess, Mystic Seaport yeah. after the big event in Boston. Yeah. Now, were you living in Connecticut at the time? No, I was, I was living in... New Jersey, I see. commuting by train to Girl Scout headquarters in Manhattan. Ooh, okay. But Young America happened to be in the Norfolk area, and we had to get her to Boston. So we put a few, we put a shipload of Girl Scouts on Young America with right. Girl Scout leaders, and they came to Boston. Oh, I bet that was an amazing trip. Yep. How fun. Thanks. All right, we get your windjammer patches. And yep. There we go. <clears throat> and here's a, a, a link that came through all the years of my life, and that was when Irving Johnson, well, he, you know, he published the book, The Peking Battles Cape Horn, and we all saw the movie. Yeah. Um, that's Peking. And in the introduction to the book, he wrote to Nancy Richardson, who would have loved this voyage. 
Irving in action. Oh, it's so wonderful. I love it. I, I've been known to get rather seasick, but I never did get sick on Sea Cloud. That's the ship on the right that I sailed with Irving and Exy when they had a, a group of friends do a transatlantic. We were all guests uh -huh. and uh, we were allowed, some of us got off in a small boat and were allowed to take a picture of Sea Cloud out distancing us, which was a little scary, I guess, in the middle of oh, the Atlantic it Ocean. <laughs> but it was a beautiful ship and a wonderful trip with all kinds of people who had either sailed with Irving and Exy around the world or um, on Catch Yankee through the waterways of Europe. You bet. Next. You bet. Mm -mm -mm. This brought together a brigantine continuum. The first time I sailed brigantine Yankee was in 1958. Um, she had just gotten back from her seventh world voyage, and this National Geographic cover is Brigantine Yankee in December of 1959, uh, which was when they published the article about their seventh world voyage. That's remarkable. Um, the picture of that Brigantine was used on all their membership stuff uh, the G National Geographic membership stuff for years. And for a while, it was the most published and distributed photograph in the world. I'll be darned. I'll then uh, with the top sale program at LA Maritime Institute, when Jim Gladson, our founder, decided that we needed twin brigantines to handle the enthusiasm of the... Um, LA Unified School District and others, and that we should name them Irving and Exy Johnson. Huh. I got to ask Exy if we could name our ships after them. So I'm um, that right. Oh, cool. of, yeah. They've both passed away now, but we're carrying on their spirit in the sailing with lots of kids. That's Swift very good. Switch is under under restoration. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And who do we see down in the lower right? Oh, and the right is um well I can see the red rub rails, so that's that's Exy and the uh, um uh, lighthouse is Angel's Gate, which is the entrance to the port of LA, and I live in San Pedro. That's my my background. Nice. And that little white dot off to the right near the um, peninsula there mm -hmm. is is one of the brigantines. Every time they go out and I see them going, I think we're changing a life just even on a day sail because of what the kids get to do. Nancy, I think that's absolutely right. For those of us who've been in schooner and education and tall ship education for years, this is what it's about, and this is why we wanted to have this conversation. Good. I'm happy to converse. All right. <laughs> okay. These are a little bit distorted. Um, they are taller than the pictures show, but that's how they fit in the Zoom. Um, yeah. I can say I've sailed from Adventurous to Zodiac. Adventurous was based in is now in um, Port Townsend, Washington, right. and Zodiac right. is now in um, Bellingham, Washington. Yep. And the connection is that, um, do we have the, yes. My first adventurous trip was with Girl Scouts from Northern and Southern, Southern California. And this was the card that I got when I was um, at, at the end of the trip. Uh, so great. You can see that she's still rigged as a pilot schooner, which was her role before um, she was moved to or sold and moved to 
the Puget Sound area. Um, yeah. yeah. And this card is what is what Carl Mayer, the first mate, whose signature is very light, um, um, signed. I'm, as it says, I'm a trusty crew and well qualified in the mysteries of the deep. <laughs> and they, I think that's very true. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't believe you still have this card since 1972. Yeah, well, I cherished it all this time and you can tell I've I've pulled it in and out of my wallet or my pocket several times. Oh, that's great. So, um the yeah. other connection between Adventurous and Zodiac uh -huh. is that Carl Mayer who was first mate of of the A um for a while, and then he became captain. And his son was a mate. Uh -huh. And did we have the sea clouds? Yeah. And and um, the owner of Adventurous, mm -hmm. Ernestine Bennett, and I were invited on a sea cloud to sail with Irving and Exy. And then... Um, um mid Atlantic, the captain asked for more American crew. So uh, okay. Ernie barred his radio, called their friends on Adventurous, and Tim Mayer came and sailed on or met us in Martinique when when Sea Cloud got to the other side of the Atlantic. Oh, fantastic. And now Tim has Zodiac. He's been captain of Zodiac for years and is passing it on to his son, Kalen. Wow. Very cool. Quite the story. Okay. I'm only going to have time to go from A to E. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> they're they're key, key, key ships. The other A ship is Freedom Schooner Amistad. And you can see Bill Pinckney there. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. He died different. this fall, unfortunately. Yep. But this is the the picture of the ship is Amistad. Yeah. And after he got back from sailing around the world in a in a sloop, a big sloop. Yeah. Um, he didn't. He didn't have any schooner experience because Amistad was being built at Mystic Seaport. So I invited him on board to come sail a schooner, Bill of Rights, which was at at, at LA Maritime Institute before we built the Brigantines. Mm -hmm. So Bill's been a has had been a a wonderful. Um, inspiration to lots of things, including the Girl Scouts Amistad Friendship Patch, which to this day, I think some girls in Connecticut are still earning. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Okay. Yeah. B is for brilliant. <laughs> There's a venerable boat. Yes. At Mystic Seaport. Yeah, you bet. Because I know, I know Brilliant because I sailed against her out of Gloucester a couple of years ago. So well, she keeps winning races. She's I think she was the quickest across the the Atlantic on a at least on one occasion. I I yeah. read um Captain George Moffat's book about the about that. Sure. Yeah. In fact, George got his job because I had been on Brilliant and Captain Biff Balker. Uh -huh. so he was going to retire and he needed a new person. So I mean it, he needed a new captain. And we I I just happened to be on I think it was Rachel and Ebenezer, maybe, and the, yeah. and I I told George he he was a mate, 
um, that Biff Bowker was looking for a captain for for brilliant, and and we ended up at a dock in I don't know Long Island Sound, and and I said to George, "That's brilliant over there." He says, "Oh, she's beautiful," and I said, oh. "Let me introduce you to the captain, and then you can be the next one." There you go. Kingmaker. Was... You're a kingmaker. Yep. Now <clears throat> she's now she's got a female captain. Yeah. Look at Sarah. Mariner Mariner Girl Scout. True. Uh, she's the co leader of a Mariner Girl Scout troop at Mystic Seaport. Oh, you know, I've had I've tried to have her give us a talk as well, and I hope I get her soon. That's yes, great. Sarah Ar Armour. Oh, yeah, you bet. You bet. Okay, now we're moving to C. <clears throat> C is for Christian Roddick. I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember the Cine Miracle movie called <laughs> Windjammer that was, um, it was a movie about Christian Roddick from Norway doing a transatlantic with a shipload of young Norwegian boys and they have lots of adventures. Oh, fun. There's a wonderful um, this is the the record of the music, and one of the songs was um, "Kari Waits for Me at Home." Oh, Kari Waits for Me, and the two young women in the square, the little square, are both named Kari. Oh, how about that? And that was at a meeting in. Norway, after I sailed Christian Roddick the first time in 2014. And um, this picture was taken when they were showing around Cape Horn to the friends of Christian Roddick. And I just happened to be going to Europe at the same time. So I, I stopped in Oslo to, to uh, help them watch around Cape Horn. <laughs> And the other, the other yeah. picture was in the summer of 2003, 23, sorry. Um, and that's, um, that's Christian Roddick taken from the small boat that some of my friends got off in um, yeah. during the sail. So but, of course, that was this summer. Right. Yes, it was. It was in all. Get August. around, my goodness. Yep. And <clears throat> she, it was the last leg of the Sail Training International Tall Ships Race. Yeah. Sailed from Arendal to Oslo on a five day voyage. And my friends made up the book and made it wonderful. Oh, how great. How great. D is for Dharma Jerzy. I don't quite say it in Polish very well, but somebody told me that if I just kind of slur Jersey, which <laughs> is where I grew up, I can do it. And it means gift of youth. In the early 80s, the um, Polish ship Dar Formosa was retired. And the youth of Poland said, we have to have a ship. It's really wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I got, um, so they, I don't know when the, oh, I guess it's 2009 is the, is, uh -huh. anyway, the Polish ships and the Russian ships were kept active with the Sail Training International races and cruises and company by a Polish woman named Janka Bylak. And I really cherish this award, the Janka Bylak Medal from Sail Training International because of all she did. And what it says is something about, I, I contributed to increasing friendship and understanding between crews. 
um, and, and tall ships. I got the medal in Quebec during a Sail Training International meeting and the Youth Council decided they wanted to a picture with me with my little oh over. nice that's what i'm seeing yes the top one was the formal one that they thought was required and the bottom one was now let's get real <laughs> and that's the kind of spirit i like to to carry on with you bet <clears throat> great picture of you too okay one one more thing about um Dharma's Majurgi in Quebec. Um, I was at the captain's dinner um, in Quebec in, in 2004, I think it was. All right. And I sat with the Polish schooner captain. Dar Pomoza was there. And the, his wife asked the Captain's wife asked me about my Mariner Girl Scout pin, which I wear almost every day. Yeah, yeah. And I, I told her about it and him. And I said, how do you carry on with scouting? Because at that time, um, the Soviets had, had taken over there. And taken over Poland, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the captain of the Polish schooner said, we do our scout pro program on our ship out of sight of land. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Oh. That's, and I gave her my pin. Oh, man. Because <laughs> I can always get another one. <laughs> um, wonderful story. Yeah. Ah, yes. <laughs> I think most of us are are familiar with the Coast Guard ship Eagle, and there's another stamp in honor of a tall ship. I'm sure there are more, but these are the two, the Dark Majerji and, and uh, Eagle. Um, it's a brave picture, I'll tell you that. That was for the... Um, the stamp was for uh, the Captain Cook Bicentennial in 1978. Mm -hmm. And I went to that event in Vancouver, British Columbia, on Adventurous, uh -huh. and met the mate or the sailmaster, Red Shannon. Maybe some people know or knew Red. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, I said how much I would love to sail on Eagle. And he said, well, we've got some berths uh, for women. Um, from That's great. Yeah. From San Francisco to Long Beach on the way back to, to the Coast Guard Academy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so <laughs> My birth was in, my birth was in uh, sick bay. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. And nobody got sick. It was cool. It well, was that's good. You mean you had a single room to yourself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a private bath. Yeah, nice. Which the which <clears throat> the, um, the regular trainees don't get to do. Mm -hmm. Although I did have more experiences on board in crew, uh, not crew quarters, but uh, trainee quarters. Um, yeah. One of the trips, other trips on, on Eagle was to the Galapagos. Oh my goodness. Where was that from? Uh, San Diego. And I had arranged for three of my fellow volunteers from LA Maritime Institute to to um to take the, the the trip was supposed to be 
from San Diego to Panama. Whoops. Two guys dropped out. So yeah. I called and got myself on board. And my friend Ed and I went on, on Eagle from San Diego. We got part way out. I mean, just outside of the breakwater into international waters, I guess. And the captain, Chris Sinnott, brought us all together and said, we have a choice. We can either try to catch the wind going down the coast, or we can put pedal to the metal, cross the equator, go to the Galapagos. It's only a thousand miles out of the way, and we'll still make it to Panama in time. What That's would you great. all like to do? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great story. So that's how we got <laughs> to the Galapagos. And um, I think it was during that trip, there's a little um, patch there. It says Galapagos, Ecuador. Uh, I see lower, it. lower left. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a the bung on it that says Eagle was... Yeah was on a trip in 2008, apparently, um, when I was on board and they were doing some work on the deck. So I got a bung. Oh, how about that? That's the crazy. other thing I got was the eagle eye, the piece of rope or line. I guess it's rope when it gets to be that way. Um, every year they end for end the the lines on on eagle. And right, right. they cut off the eye and and it was going to get thrown away. And I said, I'd love an eagle eye. <laughs> That's what that is. Oh, it's a wonderful story. And the, um, the picture of the looking up at night is is uh, I think I took that on the on the trip to to Long Beach. Uh, the final thing about eagle is that they went to Australia in 88 and they, the Captain Cummings had invited a couple of Boy Scouts when oh. I, one to sail down, one to sail back when I, when I saw them. And um, um, he, he looked at me with this, Captain Cummings looked at me with a yeah. funny look on his face. He says, oh, we invited two Boy Scouts. I guess I have to invite two Girl Scouts now that I see you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So I recruited two. I, I went back to Girl Scout headquarters and said, we have a wonderful experience for Girl Scouts. Told them about it. They said, oh, nobody will be interested. Oh, come so on. You've got, uh, I'm going to try anyway. We had 135 applications wow isn't that cool yeah and those two girls had a wonderful time one came back and became the skipper of a mariner troop in san francisco bay and the other one after they graduated um she married one of the cadets that she met wow. and my last eagle story and why we picked the picture with the helicopter is yeah. I was a, I was a bosun's mate on a search and rescue boat out of Sandy Hook, New Jersey that uh, that kind of points to the the entrance to New York Harbor. Yeah. Anyway, the, we did we did practice things with helicopters and I was privileged to get lifted off the deck of the search and rescue boat and up into the Coast Guard helicopter. Wow. I was a lot younger at the time, and they <laughs> they took me for a ride around Sandy Hook Bay. Oh, fun. Which was not called for, but I loved it. Yeah. Anyway, when they came back, they let me down very gently back on my search and rescue boat. That's a great story. My goodness. Yeah. How many people have that experience? Nope. They wanted when I when I moved from San Francisco Bay, having been a mariner skipper and a licensed captain, um, I wanted to keep up my license. So oh. when I got back east, 
um, um, people said, oh, join the auxiliary. And then I figured, oh, I could get paid to do weekends once a month in the Coast Guard Reserve. And when I got accepted, they, they said, um, well, you're qualified to be an officer. I said, oh, no, I want to be a bosun's mate. Yeah. I want to do search and rescue. I want to get out there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Europa. Oh, look at that. My goodness. She's a Dutch ship that takes <clears throat> passengers to, you can guess it, Antarctica every year. And wow. I was invited because I had been the editor of the the Tall Ships, Sail Tall Ships book. That's right. I remember that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, I was, I was, I did the first edition. You saw a picture of Brilliant. The pages mm -hmm. have changed a lot since then. Anyway, Europa wanted me to do an article in one of the Tall Ships books. So I got invited. Oh, my goodness. And of course, I said yes. Um, I flew to Ushuaia, which is the end of the world in Argentina. And we took three days to go across. And we spent several days, uh, I think seven or eight days around the, the Antarctic Peninsula. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We made friends with penguins. They're not afraid of people. I guess it's because they're they're not they don't see many people. I guess not. Um, and we also went ashore at a place where there was a um, a wreck of a boat, and I can't help thinking that that small boat wreck is similar to, not the same one similar to um, the boat that Shackleton used yeah. to go from Elephant Island to get help to rescue his whole crew on the Shackleton yeah. trip. It, it looks very similar. Yeah. It really does. Um, I guess... The next one. Now, this is one of the best pictures I ever took. It is Europa in Antarctica. And after I got the film back three weeks later, because it took us, we had to sail back to Ushuaia and I had to fly back to yeah. New Jersey. Yeah. <clears throat> I took this picture on the day, the anniversary of the day my mother died. And I believe that it's her angel beam over the ship and the sea. Yeah. And me forever. Yeah, I believe you're right. I have another card like that that's that's even more worn than than the uh yeah. The adventurous card. Mm, mm, mm. And I have one more slide. Um, I, I want all of you to keep in touch, if you will. I want to thank you all for listening. I want to wish you fair winds. There's contacts. And my, my wish. Oh, the let the sea be our bridge is a quote from a Pol the Polish captain from Dar Pomoza. So I, I think that's especially appropriate in, in today's world. I think you're right. Tell and the, us about the pictures you have here. And the, the, the uh, other pictures, that's Exie Johnson in the middle in the red jacket. And some of the pictures from the launching of the twin brigantines, she and her grandson um, broke the champagne bottle on the bow of 
the brigantine, of her brigantine. And the picture on the upper left, um, we went for a short sail afterwards uh -huh. on the swift VIP switch. And that's Exy at the helm. She was in her, well, she was, yeah, she was in her 80s at the time, at least. Yeah, yeah. She, she died in 2004, and the launch was in 2003. Um, but she was a very dynamic and wonderful Absolutely. sailor. Absolutely. There's an article in Sea History years ago that said, he couldn't have done it without her. They made it, they were perfect pair. Well, they certainly have earned a name for themselves, that's for sure. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have got um, a little bit of time for some questions for Nancy. And uh, I see we've got some really nice chats running along. Nancy, I uh, I'm associated with a guy that I trained with for a while, named Jochen Hoffman. Do you remember Jochen? Jochen was a, uh, he worked with you, I believe, in Los Angeles. Oh. And he says, so good to see and hear you again. Did you know Peking is now a museum ship in Hamburg? Yes. After a huge restoration. Yes. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. And, um, Irving used to come to New York occasionally, and and um, one time he came when Peking was still at South Street Seaport to narrate the movie online. Oh, nice. around Cape Horn. So did he, I did he do it live? Yes. Oh my goodness gracious! Yes, it was fabulous, and I thought okay. I can't lose this opportunity. I drove to the city that day with with two of, well a, a carload of mariners from the troop that I was the leader of in New yeah. Jersey and we had a wonderful time and that's when Exy invited me to sail on Sea Cloud oh perfect with them yeah how perfect so the is that? I love it you know you told me a really wonderful story about Irving Johnson teaching you how to tie a knot. Can you tell us that one? How to tie a knot. A square knot. Irving Johnson, you met him on the street in New York. Oh, well, he, he had picked me and up. You were a brownie, right? You were a brownie scout? Well, that I was a brownie scout um, when I first met him, and that was that was years before. Yeah. I, um, yeah, he did. He, t he taught me how to make a, a square knot at that lecture. I the love it. The okay. other thing he taught me was on Fifth Avenue in New York near Girl Scout National Headquarters. He had come. We were going to the uh, New York Yacht Club, I think, because he was the speaker. Anyway, I told him that I was having a hard time throwing the, the uh, heaving line and hitting my target from the back of the search and rescue boat when I was in the Coast Guard. So he got me to the edge of the curb and he put his arms around me and we wheeled around and <laughs> through the through the heaving line. And he says, that's how you do it. You that's you let go when you're pointing at the target. <laughs> that's a wonderful story. <laughs> Yes, I, I have a, a note here from Jeffrey Spear. You could have made great friendships and shared wonderful experiences in many other ways. What is it about tall ships and sailing that has captivated your spirit for so many years? I find it energizing in so many ways to be underway with kids, youth, students of all ages and see the changes in other people as well as my own growth. Yeah, yeah you bet. And 
it's experiences with the shipmates. Like I said, you can count shipmates. I mean, you can count ships, but it's shipmates that count. And the other feeling is that I get, when I've been out of sight of land, the true necessity for teamwork, because you can't raise the sails alone. You reach higher or you climb higher if you go aloft. The challenges that kids take, um, and I have taken, um, in fact, I was aloft on Alyssa oh, waiting for the next command on the yard arm. And um, the girl next to me, we started to chat. And I said, oh, um, what, what excited you about tall ships and yeah, how, yeah. how come you're here? And she said, oh, I read an article in Cruising World. And then she said, and you wrote it. Oh. <laughs> so there I was in the rigging. What a great story. Yeah. Here's a follow-up question from, excuse me, from Rob Lehman. Nancy, what is it about tall ships? That works so well for teaching kids. Oh, a Rob, Rob's a favorite of mine. Um, he understands, as do most crew and captains who sail with kids, is that it gets them out of their comfort zone. They don't. They're afraid of the, half the kids who sail with us in LA say yeah. they've never seen the ocean. Yeah. yeah. They're afraid they're as they step on board, they go up a ladder like steps. You can tell they're hesitating. Yeah. And they get on board and they want to sit down right away. Cause that's safe. Yeah. Yeah. I and as they as they get to pull on the lines to raise the sails, as they get to steer the ship, and most of the kids we sail with don't have a driver's license. Yeah. And they've got yeah. up to 40 people's lives in their hands in this beautiful big ship. Um, they are given the opportunity to climb the rigging or out on the bowsprit. Um, Interestingly enough, it's usually the girls who go first because the boys don't want to get shown, you know, that what if I turn around? Uh, so they climb higher than ever yeah. and yeah. they are challenged and they have to get along with each other. We used to, we, we had a, a rule that Jim Gladson made up on our Lammy ships and that is we're friends with everybody when we're on the ship. And if you can't act that way, we'll teach you. And good for him. Yeah. Yeah. And good for him. You know, so I, nobody it, was, nobody was left out. Everybody was important. No, it's, it's very common. You know, my experience teaching inner city kids is they get on the boat. They've never seen water many times. And they've been told, that it's dangerous. Yes. They, they will die. Yes. Well, from the sharks in, in from the sharks. Port of Los Angeles. Yeah, from the sharks. Yeah, yeah, that's what they've told me. Yep. The same thing, man. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. And they don't know how to swim because <clears throat> no place to learn in their neighborhoods. Yeah, you know, we started a program when I was doing it that included swimming. And, it, you know, it was very good, the local pools. Here's one. Nancy was my scout leader in the San Francisco Bay area out of Co Coyote Point. A great inspiration to become an amazing woman. She remains my hero. Woohoo! And all I have <laughs> is NC. And we painted a few small sailboats, the 1976 Tall Ships Parade. And my best friend, and a friend of mine as well, 
Linda Gunn became a sailor herself. Wow. How about that, huh? Well, that's Nancy Chamberlain. It could well be. All I have is Nancy. <laughs> oh, okay. And she, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think I knew her mother, Marion Chamberlain. It could be. It could well be. Um, now we have somebody, SB, says, Nancy, I remember that patch. <laughs> we don't know which one. I met oh, you while I was a deckhand on the Young America, 79 to 80. Thanks for uh, sharing your life at sea in photos. Yep. That's Steve Briggs. Steve Briggs. That's what it says on my Steve list. Briggs. Huh? These Steve Briggs. I have a Stevie Briggs who's the uh, president of uh, the schooner race. Agree. Yeah. And his brother, um, Stephen, Jesse. Jesse yes. was captain on the A.J. Meerwald. I'll be doggone. Well, I know that. I know these guys, but I didn't realize they had this connection with you. Small world. And uh, I think it looks like Nancy writes to you. Nancy knew my mother, Marion Chamberlain, which you just yep. said. At the Maritime mm -hmm. Institute in Redwood City. There's still a Mariner Girl Scout troop there. Isn't that great? Yep. Isn't that great? I became an educator and have worked with kids throughout my career, including work with Girl Scouts in the National Capital area of Virginia, all inspired by Nancy it, Richardson. It's so good to, you know, oh, I love to be in touch. And that's why we do it, right? Yes. Oh, here, look at the next one from J.E. Uh-huh. That's John Edgerton. Oh, my goodness. He was captain on Mystic Whaler. He was. And a good, Pat, good friend of mine. Pat was a, Pat was a um, chaperone for the Girl Scouts when I took Mariners on Mystic Whaler. Oh, no way. And they fell in love. Oh, no way. <laughs> Oh, tell me, you're the catalyst. <laughs> no, it was the ship, and it was, and it was certainly John. Oh my God! Well, he is one of my favorite people, that's for sure. My wife was a Mariner Scout chaperone. We credit Nancy for our meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And then we go down a little bit. Nancy, have you ever sailed aboard Elissa? What a shame if you haven't. Well, that was, Alyssa was where I was aloft when, when, I forget what her name was. Uh, when that girl asked me whether I, I, had, yeah, yes, I've sailed Alyssa just okay. for a day sail out of Galveston. Oh, super fun. Super fun. Thanks for a wonderful tall ship memories. Uh, every, every, I guess she means ever, ever since I saw Op Sail in 76, I've loved the history of sail. And of course, that's why we do it, isn't it? Yes. And here's a GD. Does that ring a bell? I was at the farewell shanty sing at South. Oh, oh at yeah. Left for Hamburg. That's cool. I don't think I know him. Do you remember the farewell shanty sing? Yes. Yes. And I. I was at Operation Sail in 76. Yep. There was a small tall ships event in 1964. Okay. I had just graduated from Penn State, and my Aunt Emma said, let's go see those ships. I know you like that. Oh, right. yeah. What we did was we, we drove, she drove to Staten Island, and uh -huh. we took the Staten Island Ferry to the tip of Manhattan and back and forth and back and forth between the ships as they paraded into no the harbor. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything scarier. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I think at the time it was a, um, it might have been a baby brownie camera. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Great story. Let's see, here's some from WG. Wonderful to see in here, Nancy. She had her Girl Scouts on Rachel and Ebenezer when I was skippering. 
Yes. Nancy, inspiration to us all. WG. That's Will Gates. He's now about to retire from um, um, Maryland Dove. Maryland Dove. And don't I know it because I can't get him to come on this program yet. <laughs> oh, well, he should. So we'll get it together. Yes. <laughs> oh, people are putting this all together. In this fun? This yeah. Fun world. And greetings from San Francisco. Have you been on Matthew Turner? Any other tall ships on San Francisco Bay? And other memories of San Francisco Bay? Did you yes. know Al Lutz? Eagle and Alma Scow Schooner. Peter. Um, I sailed Alma when I lived in San Francisco Bay, and I'm good friends with Alice Cochran and the people at um, Heal the uh, uh, Call of the Sea, uh, which is Matthew Turner, the Matthew Turner. Yeah. Um, and yes. I've, I've sailed it as well as seaward. No, oh, isn't that great? Isn't that great? We got a couple <laughs> more questions that have come across the board. And here's one that's it's pretty appropriate, I think. Nancy, what new tall ship adventure do you want to have under sail in 2024? Ooh, there's a tough mm -hmm. one. From Alice Cochran. Yeah, Alice and I met through unicorn years ago and she's on the board of call of the sea yeah i think I, she, she's one way that i got to sail on matthew turner um new tall ship adventure well i'm hoping to be part of the european all ships races again or I've heard that one of the tall ships and I won't say which one because it hasn't happened yet yeah wants to do the Northwest Passage oh wouldn't that be amazing yeah oh man when I say when I say I've been uh, my tall ship experiences have included Antarctica to the Arctic. Actually, in the Arctic, I just put my foot in the um, in the water up to a brigantine tattoo that I have on my ankle. <laughs> so I would like to sail the Arctic Ocean. <laughs> and I know there is a ship that's expect or trying to do it, whether they'll do it in 2024 or not. Alice, maybe you can go with me. Ooh, I bet you'd love that. Hey, my friend Stevie Briggs writes, the Young America was my first tall ship, and Nancy's Girl Scouts troop was my first sail training trip. Wow. So how about that? Huh? To to, are you, are you, Steve, are, are you in New Jersey? Stevie works uh, out of Norfolk. Oh, then. He's a tugboat captain now. Then he should um, he should come to the Tall Ships America conference in in Baltimore. Absolutely. In February. Absolutely. Look it up, Steve. And my Let guess is you, uh, my guess is you know my friend Nan Meraki. Yeah. Yeah. And she goes there all the time, so it's always fun. Well. Yeah. Let's, let's see here, and I'll give you one last one before we go. Thank you. You're an inspiration. Thanks for connecting me to the tall ship world. Uh, love from the mountains of Vermont, says Rachel Miller. How about that? Nancy brought me from U.S. sailing to the tall ships conference back in 2010, and I'm so grateful. And I'm so grateful to her. I'm going to be in touch with her again. Yes. Since the tall ships event, a uh, tall ships um, America event is going to be a uh, conference is going to be in Baltimore. Maybe she'd help us get somebody from the National Geographic to come. And why not? Right. Yeah, and why not? And 
and she's heard me say this, but I, I, I want to say to everybody, you can count ships, but shipmates count. You've heard that me say that. Yes, we have. And the ships that count, friendship, leadership, stewardship, etc. My parting words are, let's make ships happen. And that's the truth. And that's spelled the right way. <laughs> Good for you. I do have one, one more question oh. that came in from a friend of mine named Julie Covert. She and her husband, uh, Hugh, built a schooner, if you can believe it, on Drummond Island up near Lake, uh, on Lake Huron. Oh, yes. And uh, if you'd like to sail a new tall ship, she says, we'd be, we'd love to have you board schooner Huron. Oh, that's Huron, Huron Jewel. Yes, I and have sailed um, Discover. It, that used to be in. Oh, up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It used to be in the Great Lakes. I and and um, there's a little port on the west side of Michigan. Not Bay City, but there's yeah. another little port there. We had a, a tall ship event there. And after that, they built. Um, I think they called it Friendship. I'm not okay. sure. But they yeah. built a ship after the chips came in. They decided they needed one too. They do. Well, I have a great lake. Julie, I, uh, um, yeah. yeah it's great Let story. me know. You've got my, you've got my um, contact. My contact in the thing. Nancy, you've been a trooper, and this has been such a delight. It's uh, been delightful for me too. I want to thank you, and I'm glad I had a chance to help you clean off your desk. Well, <laughs> and I I need to thank my friend Judith Nast for yeah. being my technical advisor, because we would not be on the screen without her. I can guarantee that, having seen your screen without her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my thank goodness. You. How much fun is that? All right, you guys, uh, Nancy, stay on the screen just for a moment or two after we run this. Okay. And we will uh, say thanks. Here we go. And so many old friends. Oh, absolutely. I want to thank everyone for joining us. It's great to see you all here. It's great to have Nancy here. And what a great way to move into Christmas and all these great holidays that we're all going to enjoy so much. Nancy, you were wonderful. And thank you, Judith. Yay! <laughs> all right, everybody. Have a great holiday season. Thank you. Can we print the chat so I can get back to people? Of course. It's coming at you. I'll have this up and ready by tomorrow afternoon. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. See you soon.